Hello people, I have built a new design of cell, which can actually look half decent, while retaining effectivity. As far as I can see this concept is of my own invention, but please do inform me if someone has already made a video displaying such an idea. Now, let us actually look at our cell. If you haven't already deduced, it works via the movement of blocks, made possible through the use of extenders. Said blocks are customizable, allowing you to make your interior out of any block you desire, besides, naturally, obsidian variants and other immovables. I recommend this block be at least somewhat resistant, depending on the efficiency of your prison's entry protocol. Speaking of prisons, I actually spent maybe an hour or 300 building my own prison, but it's subpar, and I have no desire to work upon it any further. Down below there shall be a link, through which you can explore this mess. The highlight of said prison is by far the cell we see here. It is the only part of a project I conceived with no influence from fellow parties, while the rest of the prison is pretty banal, not to mention ineffective and rubbish. But enough dawdling, I still need to fully demonstrate our cell working in action, as well as describe its limits and capabilities. So, as we see here, every so often a segment centred within each wall will extrude, while a length below and above this segment shall extend upwards and downwards, respectively. This effectively means that each block in these walls will be either covered or moved forwards for a short space, following a set period, initiated by a redstone clock such as the one we see here. You can of course customise this period, causing the sequence to occur more or less frequently per period. But what does all this rigmarole achieve? Watch as this fool attempts to mine through one of these walls. The block cracks, begins to fragment, but then the poor wretch is foiled. The sequence has completely reset all damage done to the wall, and shall do this no matter what block you batten, with your distance and angle being, so far as I can tell, ineffective towards altering this result. Now we shall touch upon the floor and ceiling. You may well question what prevents our prisoner from making their escape via these two sections. Observe. While the first two layers of the floor and ceiling are quite possible to penetrate, this weakness is resolved once we reach the third. Here we find a section of movable blocks that shall be moved up once per period, as with the walls, when the above layer of the mobile blocks has been ruptured. This essentially halts our prisoner's progress. The two foremost layers may well be destructible, but their removal does nothing to aid our prisoner's escape. In fact, he may now be a lot less comfortable for it. The corners will be completely concealed each sequence, making the blocks within them fully customizable. You can in fact place interactive blocks here, such as barrels, chests, and even musical boxes. You could also utilize wall space above and beneath the extending section here for a similar purpose. Before I round off this video, I would like to mention that this cell works best when the prisoner is stricken by mining fatigue, yet it can work without where all blocks from the cell to be of a resilient nature, or the redstone clock timings to allow a sequence to occur more frequently per period of time. Now, my work is done. Until next time, good viewer. <laughs>